What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Coral Reef Talk. I'm Joey Jones. I'm Julian Sprung. Biggest 
some advice for them just getting started? If they are just getting started uh, with, with keeping morals, there's several pieces of advice. Um, it'd be good to join a club, the Marine Aquarium System. So you have a group, a core group of people who can share their experience. Because what's true is when you come at it as a, uh, a neophyte, there's a lot of information and it's hard to filter it and really know what's right and what isn't. Um, if you like to read, <laughs> it's also good to get good books and read them as a good counterbalance to all the blizzard of information that you get online. It's good to be aligned with a, a, a good pet store where you can get good advice just like you do in, in your brain and society. Uh, if you've got a good dealer who's bringing in some nice forms and you get a good relationship with them, that's going to help you as well. So that's your foundation. You know, it's, it's a community effort to have success in your aquarium. For the aquarium itself, you know, some people might say, well, you want to start with a bigger tank or not. I, I really recommend people starting out consider a smaller aquarium. Um, the only reason why I would say not to have a smaller aquarium is if, for example, you were really dead set on having certain fishes like tanks, you, know, you want to have a yellow tank or sailfin tank, then you can't start with a small tank. It needs to be a bigger tank. But if the fish weren't really your concern, if corals was what you really wanted, and you wanted to get your feet wet, then I would say a nano aquarium is ideal. And then you could start with certain frags, and you don't want to go and buy every little uh, type of coral and have a poster, postage stamp collection. No, pick a few good ones, let somebody advise you on what's hard, and get your feet wet and have some level of success. During that time, you'll become accustomed to what's important water quality wise, how to maintain it, how much time it's going to take, and you'll see whether that your involvement, if you're getting enough enjoyment out of it, to justify, you know, it's not so hard, there's not so much time, but it does take some time. You do need to develop a high a skill, learning how to look at the tank. Some people just starting out there. Yeah. They see all this information about calcium levels on the right and they try to chase numbers. And yes. <laughs> What works for some people don't necessarily work for everyone. Right. So is there is there one thing? I know there's a lot of things, but is there one specific thing that maybe stands out for well, so just starting? Like for for corals, if we're just talking about corals, calcium and alkalinity are key. That's really really a key. Um, that's why there are so many calcium and alkalinity supplemental products. Corals very rapidly pull down the alkalinity, uh, and most people think of calcium, but you really need to be doing both in a balanced fashion. Um, so that that would be the, the main focus: calcium and alkalinity. Temperature, of course, is is key. Um, if you live in a fairly uh, moderate climate, you probably wouldn't think of temperature right away. People living in the northeast where it gets really, really cold, they immediately know, okay, I need a heater. Uh, living in Miami like I do, you know, you're thinking of a chiller or air conditioning. Uh, but there are many people who have basements and have their aquarium in the basement. The temperature is pretty stable uh, most of the year. So, uh, But temperature is critical for corals. It should be below 80 degrees. Or if it gets into the 80s, not much above 81 or 82. Um, ideally, in the mid-70s, 75 to 78 is ideal temperature for growing things. Uh, you know, I mean, there's issues of lighting and water flow that are important. Uh, some of the nutrient levels, but those are more esoteric, uh, long-term maintenance issues. But the uh, calcium and alkalinity is, is immediate all the time, so is temperature. For you. What's next for Two Little Fishies? What's next for Julian Sprung? Where are you headed? Well, Julian Sprung and Two Little Fishies are intimately related. So, what's next for Julian Sprung is perpetuating um, you know, the success of Two Little Fishies.